all aboard the ongoing series of Julian mispronouncing album titles. Hey, our review family, keep it, I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be covering the new Opeth record entitled Incata Venenum. And I've heard people pronouncing it differently, so if I mess that up royally, I'm sorry. Uh, Opeth. I have a strange relationship with this band. They're from Stockholm, Sweden, formed in 1989, and their lineup now is literally completely different than when they first formed. Mikkel Ackerfeld has been the glue that has held the whole band together through all of the changes. He's been kind of one of the more constant people since, I believe, 1992, which makes sense because he's, you know, the lead guitarist, the lead vocalist, the main songwriter. They've released quite a few records, a lot of records, and all of them have been stylistically different than the last one. Originally, they started out performing a style of progressive and technical death metal with a little bit of influence coming from the world of black metal and influences coming from genres such as jazz, such as classical, such as progressive rock and progressive metal. Their first four records are nice, but it was really Blackwater Park where the band hit this trajectory where people were starting to pay attention to them. They hit a little bit of a steep curve in the 2000s, releasing some records that I think are some of their weakest, or at least weakest in this style of music, but kind of bounced back with Ghost Reveries in 2005, and in 2008, my personal favorite album by the band Watershed. On Watershed, you could definitely see they were going into more of a direction that incorporated more progressive rock passages and a lot more emphasis on clean vocals and cleaner melodic passages, as opposed to some of the very rough death metal, you know, t progressive death metal that they had performed on previous records. It's shown up in little glimpses prior to this, but Watershed really was the turning point. And it only carried on into the 2010s, where they have completely gone and embraced progressive rock and progressive metal. With albums like Heritage and Pell Communion, I definitely prefer the latter over the former. The previous record, Sorceress, released in 2016, one of my least favorite Opeth albums. I just think it's one of their more uninspired endeavors when it comes to progressive rock and progressive metal. An album that I tried to get myself to attach to and stick to, but I just couldn't. So in Cotta Venenum, what is it looking like? In my opinion, I think it is the best album from this band since they have embarked on the Prog journey. Now don't get me wrong, their output in the 2010s has been pretty good. No one really sounds like Opeth. It just sounds a lot more refined and great on this record. Coming through with one of the best albums they've released since Ghost Reveries and Watershed. If you're wanting old Opeth though, with those dark, gloomy, despondent death metal and progressive death metal patterns to them, you're setting yourself up for disappointment and failure because this is very much in the vein, very much in the direction of their progressive rock isms, which is fine because I think they do a great job of making this track listing feel very expansive for what it's worth. Through over an hour's worth of material, it all feels like a conscious nod to the titans of the progressive rock genre, mixed with original prog passages and melodies and harmonies that are very original, very modernized, and not stale at all. With Opus' usual kind of avant-garde approach to riff writing and incorporating different instruments into their repertoire, as well as layering things, none of this feels just like homogenized prog. And god, homogenized prog rock and prog metal has become a major problem. Thank God Opeth never gave way to that. But the devil really is in the details here. If you go into this thinking it's just a prog rock album, you're probably going to end up finding it very shallow. Many of these tracks are so much easier to find a deep appreciation of if you have more of an understanding of composition and how much thought went into creating all of these textures. The album itself does kind of blend together at a lot of times. It just feels a little bit tweaked, which on one hand you can say that's a cohesive good section of this album album, the fact that it all feels like this cohesive beast, but at the same time, the diversity isn't necessarily as good as I wish it would have been for a record that's over an hour. However, there is no denying that Opeth packs more progressions into even half a track, let alone a full track, than most bands can do in an entire track. It's full of some great melodic riffs, the drum work is very punchy, it's right in your face, Mikkel's vocals sound great as ever. Not a big fan of some of the approaches he takes on this record though. A good example of this is how on this record there are many occasions where he'll slip into these whisper type vocals or these strange squeaky, very, not even falsetto, just very like, appeal 
that type of range that I don't think a lot of times will fit where he does it, the placement of it. And a lot of times when he does do these whisper vocals, they get put with this effect that makes him sound even more drowned and even more in the background. There's also a lot of moments where I feel like the way that they get a little long-winded can be a little tiresome. When I say that, I'm saying some of these sections where they do slow down and go maybe to just a slow acoustic guitar riff or they'll have an acoustic guitar riff and a little bit of drums or a little bit of piano. I am a huge fan of prog rock. I like the atmosphere. I like the kind of density and the tension that's built in this atmosphere. It's just at the same time, some of it does feel like it comes right at a section that it maybe shouldn't have. Like the song is at full throttle or the song is just full of so much, you know, fun and energy and passion. And then it go, goes a little bit, you know, restrained and constrained by the own composition that they're trying to put it in and its confinement. But it is a bit of a contradiction for me to say that because some of the best tracks on the record and some of the best moments on the record are when they tone it down, such as on the track Love, Lauren, Crime, where I just love those pianos and acoustic guitars going head to head. I think a track like Dignity is an amazing indication of this record. It sounds like something Jethro Tull or Rush would have made if they were still able to like innovate with an amazing production style today. It's amazing how this track goes through so many passages and so many changes. I'll jump back to the first track for a second, Garden of Earth delights. This is a great opener. It's a great, great opener. It's a little bit longer than I might have liked and it doesn't necessarily do too much to ch change it up, change the pace up. But for what it's worth, it's super spacious and ominous and eerie. The synth line is amazing. I like the little chimes in the background as well as the way they incorporate this just despondent feel, this gloomy spacious feel. And it's all amplified by this choir they insert. This record is so much about the details. On the surface, it can feel like it is a little bit shallow, like it's a little bit weak, like there's not too much going on in some of these slower moments, but the compositions are so flavorful and so fun to listen to. These tracks do not feel as long as they are. They blast by in a flash, in a flurry. There's so much talent on display. I applaud the band. The songwriting is there, and for a band this far in their career, it's very impressive that with this record, they were able to continue on this trajectory of prog rock and make it as good as it is. I'll be honest, I would not have given this score to any of the other records that they released in the 2010s up until this point, but to be honest, I really am feeling an 8 out of 10 on this. And that is a wrap. Please stick for the end screen. I'll link some videos that you might be interested in. Have you heard this new Opeth record, Encada Venetum? If you have, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. I would love to discuss the record with you. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today. I'd love to have you here. And smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy. You know who it is. And I'm signing off saying farewell. Well.